everyone, I'm Nienke and in this video I will explain to you what is a confounder. If you look at my channel you will also find some additional videos in which I will discuss how we can deal with confounding, showing some real life examples with some real data. And also I will go into more detail uh, in some specific forms of confounding, such as confounding by indication. But in this video I just want to cover the basics. What I will do today is I will discuss first of all how can we study causal effects uh, in observational data and which problems can occur. And then I will come to the topic of confounding. So let's start with discussing how we can study causal effects in research. As epidemiologists, we are always interested in studying certain factors and look at what the effect of those factors is on the outcome. So in the ideal situation, we would like to randomize, which means like flip a coin to decide which people have a certain factor and which people do not. For example, we would be interested in studying the effect of smoking on mortality. And in the ideal situation, this factor should be randomized between people which means we would like to flip a coin to decide which people smoke and which people do not. However, you can already imagine that this is an unrealistic and undoable, or possibly unethical in many situations. The studies where we can actually do interventions are quite rare. They are mostly limited to treatments. But of course, there are many other factors that we would like to study as epidemiologists. But obviously, we can uh, not randomize in these type of studies. That is why epidemiologists generally use a lot of observational data. And what is observational data? These are data uh, that uh, constitute of a large group of people that we preferably follow for a longer period of time until the event of outcome, in our example, mortality, occurs. The second advantage of this is that we can actually study several factors at once. Obviously, if we study a certain population and we ask people for their smoking habits, we can also ask them how old they are, what other diseases they have, if they, what their weight is, and you can imagine that we can measure many things at once. And this is a large advantage of these type of large studies. So coming into the concept of confounding, because this type of research brings some challenges. So let's get back to the example I just mentioned. So we are interested in the effect of smoking on mortality, as you can see here. The large challenge that we have here is that there are many other factors that are also associated with smoking, but can also cause mortality. To give an example, we know that people who smoke generally have other uh, bad lifestyle habits as well. For example, they might have uh, certain dietary habits that can also cause overweight and can cause an increased risk of mortality. So if we would simply compare the smokers with the non-smokers and compare the mortality outcomes of the these two groups, you can imagine that this could cause problems. So therefore, in this example, simply comparing the mortality of smokers with the mortality of non-smokers would cause a form of confounding. And in this example, the diet that I'm showing here is the confounder. So what is the formal definition of a confounder? A confounder is a factor that is associated with the factor that you're studying. In this example, that would be smoking. It's also a factor that is associated with the outcome, which is in this example, mortality. But the factor should not lie in the causal pathway. And I will explain a little bit more about that third condition. So coming back to our example in which dietary habits are a confounder for the association between smoking and mortality, you can imagine that there are certain steps between the factor smoking and the actual mortality. So for example, we know of course that smokers have an increased risk of getting lung cancer and they might die as a result of that. So in fact, lung cancer is also associated with the exposure, which is smoking, but also with mortality. So you could say it's a confounder, but in this case that lies in the causal pathway. And if you would adjust for a confounder, and that is a, something I will discuss in my next video, then we would actually adjust away the effect of smoking because it lies in the causal pathway. So in this example, lung cancer is not a confounder, but dietary habits are. So to sum up and to give you the final definition of a confounder, it is a factor that is associated with both the factor of interest and the outcome that you're studying, but does not lie in the causal pathway. In the next video, I will show you some examples of confounders in real life data of my own research. And I will also show you what happens if you adjust for these factors in analyses, but also if you adjust for factors that are in the causal pathway. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and I would be really happy if you would leave a comment to give me some feedback on this video as I'm just starting out on YouTube.